It's nearly 18 years to the day when I last left this place. I mean, they kept calling me a serial candidate, wanting to be back in here. Pauline Hanson has spent nearly two decades and nine failed state and federal elections trying to claw her way back. And now that she's here, it's a little overwhelming. You're a bit emotional. I am, yeah. I can feel it. <laughs> is it, is it because um, you've been given that second chance? Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, feeling honoured or feeling... Yeah. It's, yeah. Or is it just, it was, it's the thing you wanted so much? You know, it's, it's, it's it changed my whole life. Australia lives in that building, doesn't it? It's the... Senator Hanson will be spending a lot of time here in Canberra over the next six years. Come on in, Liz. This is it. Oh, this is pretty impressive, yeah. actually. Look at that. This is her Parliament House office. This is your homework. Yep, all my homework. And already there's a lot to do. I reckon you should take a little sit in your chair. It's, um, yeah. You know what? Feels good. I know I was meant to be here. What will success represent for you? I think for the pure fact that I was voted in, you know, to me that is, that is success. What would you consider failure then after six years? If they didn't want to vote me in at the next election. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Since Pauline Hanson arrived on the political scene back in 1996, it's been a pretty rough ride. I believe we are in danger of being swamped by Asians. It started with her maiden speech. I should have the right to have a say in who comes into my country and never stopped. I do not want Australia to become Asianised. Do you want race rights, religious fanaticism, gang and drug wars? Although some of her suggestions proved to be not too far off the mark. I've been asked, what's your view about the boat people? I said, you go out, you meet them, you fill them up with fuel, you fill them up with food, you give them medical supplies and you say, go that way. Pauline Hanson was polarising. And Australia had never seen anything like it. We will lose our country forever and be strangers in our own land. I don't go out there just to you know, set the world on fire. That's not the case. But I think there are... <laughs> Sometimes you've lit but... quite a bushfire. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, but I don't intentionally do that, Liz. It's just the way that it comes, it comes out sometimes and people say, shock horror. Well, have, have, there been time, have there been times that you've regretted something you've said? Well, I suppose. If I hadn't have said swamp by Asians <laughs> in my maiden speech, um, it might have been different because it wasn't, it wasn't meant to offend the Asians that are here or people have come here for a new way of life. Pauline Hansen is now 62. Home for the past 25 years is a farm just outside of Ipswich in southeast Queensland. Great to see you. This is your paradise. Hers is a quintessential Australian backyard. You have a trick that makes her feel very happy. That's what I do. So, and I find that that sort of tells you if, if there. See, oh, <laughs> lemon's going everywhere. You know what? You've always been shaking the tree. I. <laughs> I'll have to teach you how to make lemon butter. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for a gin and tonic. But yeah, anyway. yeah, it's a beautiful spot. I love the country. I'm not a city girl. <sighs> when I'm out in the public, it's very full on for me because I'm so recognisable. And um, never thought of changing the colour of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> they, they talk about me, Liz, if I ever did that. <laughs> she was born Pauline Seacombe one of seven children in a household where her late mum, Nora, had some old school views. I was always taught the yellow race will rule the world. 
And if we don't do something now, until we catch up a little bit, I'm afraid, yes, the yellow race will rule the world. And Pauline barely had time to dream. What did you think you would do in life? I had no idea. My childhood went that quick and I was married at 16, had my first child at 17. So I always thought uh, I would have liked to have been a police officer. And, uh, but that wasn't the case because I, I, I was... I read about modelling. I was. I, I always thought about that as well. What are you going to have? Can I have two pieces of mullet? Instead, Pauline worked her own fish and chip shop. And you've got a steak sandwich and old perch and chips to go on. A twice divorced single mother of four children who would go on to cut her political teeth as a local councillor. Is that where you got your confidence to, to stand up in public life? <sighs> confidence. It's been very hard for me, Liz, and you, you might find this after me to say. I was quite one of the family. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I find that hard. <laughs> <laughs> we, we laugh about this, you know. So you, so you didn't have confidence? No, to actually get into politics and to do that, I really had to push myself to be the voice. It doesn't, it, it's never come to me easily. Mr Acting Speaker, when I stood on that floor of Parliament to deliver my maiden speech, speech, my knees were shaking. I was so That's nervous. And you look back the footage and you can see it. And I suppose I've always thought, this is who I am, this is what you get. And people say, oh, well, can you say it differently? But do, you, but do you understand what people are wanting you to do? I'm, I'm trying to get them... Even my kids say to me, Mum, we understand what you're saying, but can you say it a little bit differently? Stop wasting water, you're on tank water now. <laughs> Pauline's children are strong supporters of their mother. Careful, I'm on tank order. I don't want to waste it. Although daughter Lee says her mother's <laughs> political ambitions have provided them with plenty of comical material. When your mum said, I'm going to stand for election, did you think, oh no, or...? <laughs> Which election are we talking about? <laughs> You're right, your mum's never actually stopped, has she? No, no. We have a joke in our family where every time mum said to us, you know, I'm going to run again, we call her Johnny Farnham. Because um, <laughs> every time she says, no, nope, this is the last time, no more. What has it been like? Because I don't think a lot of people understand that children are affected when their parents go into politics. Um... Look, it's been challenging over the years. I mean, at one stage, I had a death threat against myself. So that was bizarre. I was 13, I think, at the time, so I had no gravity of the situation whatsoever. But of all the challenges the family has faced, by far the greatest was when Pauline was sentenced to three years jail for electoral fraud. After the guilty verdict was handed down, Hanson remained defiant, declaring her innocence and later saying, rubbish, this is a joke. It is a shock, but she's doing well. She's a strong woman. Pauline's imprisonment was met with outrage. It's a disgrace that we have a political prisoner in Australia. And three months later, her conviction was overturned. I saw Mum came, came out of prison as someone who was emotionally ripped apart. Someone who was always so strong and emotionally stable to see a skeleton of the person she used to be um, emotionally. It took her years to be able to move past that. Pauline believed her imprisonment was political and cited Tony Abbott for helping fund the legal case against her. I thought it was in Australia's national interest that the Pauline Hanson political juggernaut be stopped. Heaven help this country if Tony Abbott is ever in control of it. I detest the man. Tony Abbott, have you thought about what you're going to say to him? You'll run into him. Um, no problems about that. <clears throat> Tony has all has already offered to have a cup of coffee with me. Has he? Yes. Isn't he you smart? Didn't know that, did you? No. <laughs> and I said I'd love to. Did you? Yes, I did. Why? Liz, you, this I'm, is a man you detested. Liz, you, you can't live on um, hate. I'm, don't forget, I'm like a bloody old elephant and I don't forget. But the whole fact is, 
He has a job to do, I have a job to do. I'm not a vindictive person, I'm there to do work for the people. So you've forgiven him? I said I'm like a bloody old elephant. <laughs> Hello, Jack. Everyone wants a piece of Pauline. People have had a gut for me. <laughs> Thank you. Her One Nation party holds four seats in the Senate, making her more powerful than ever. And even the Prime Minister, who said this before the election... Pauline Hanson is, as far as we are concerned, uh, not a welcome presence on the Australian political scene. ...seems to have changed his tune. And today, he's asked to meet with Pauline. They must th know that I'm going to be a person in the Senate that they'll have to deal with. And an hour later... Well, how did that go? Very good. Very, very um, pleased with it. Um, he was very gracious and spoke to me about... Well, I did most of the talking. <laughs> so... Did he apologise? No, and I didn't ask for one either. Does that mean you like him? <laughs> I... <laughs> Do I like him? Yeah. Um, I respect him. It's a dream come true. Pauline Hanson has long wanted to be heard, and now with her voting block of senators, she has the opportunity to influence major policy and decision-making. If you had one message for the people of Australia, now that you are in Parliament, what would it be? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'd actually, the message that I'd say to them. I don't know, Liz, it's just... Is there one promise you can make? Is there one thing that you know you can guarantee? What I would say to the Australian people is that I will always try to be upfront, honest and accountable to them. Well, guys, Parliament House, Senate side, Congratulations. Her senators are mostly political novices. Um, we are united as a team. I don't want the perception out there that it's going to fall apart like Clive Palmer did. Malcolm Roberts is a climate change denier. Brian Burston was once sacked from One Nation. And Rod Cullerton, whose future as a senator is already <laughs> under a cloud. You've got a, a, a team of quite strident personalities. You're confident you've got the discipline and the unity that everybody's on board? Most definitely. I am a people's representative. And my senators are also a people's representative. First and foremost, loyalty is basically to the people, not Pauline Hanson. I'm not tying them up. I'm not saying, hey, I'm, I'm the boss here, I'm the leader, guys, here. You've got to do what I'm saying. I'm not. But... You do have to have a leader, and you are the boss. I tell you what, Liz, when the decisions have to be made, I will make them. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. This means too much to me, and I've hung on for the last 18 years since I last walked out of that place. So at the end of the day, if a decision has to be made, I'll make it. <laughs> Her voters have high expectations. They're people who are disenchanted with the major parties and who believe she is their voice. Pauline's gaining more traction because she gets out there and says what the majority of the people are thinking. I'm Pauline. My mum's a big fan of you. And Pauline is attentive to her supporters. She's going to stand up to people like Turnbull. Turnbull hasn't got any balls to feel smart. Put that in. <laughs> including the workers at her local Meals on Wheels. I'm going to talk to the Prime Minister about this one. She's clearly loved by many. Well, you've got Pauline now. Yes, we've got Pauline now. <laughs> <laughs> We're lucky we met her. But she's also occasionally loathed. You're just a racist redneck with your red hair. Go, go away. Go back to Ipswich and your fish and chip shop. Disgraceful. You're a woman lacking 
uh, moral fibre. You are intellectually dishonest and you're not welcome here. Some of your enemies have been very vocal. How do you feel when you're called a virus, an opportunist, a half-wit, part of the ugly underbelly of Australia? Oh dear. It's like water off a duck's back. Doesn't, oh, doesn't no. penetrate? No. Doesn't hurt? No. No. Doesn't mean anything? No. Why should it? Because you know what? In here, it's because I know I'm not going out there to personally hurt anyone. Never have done. Never, ever have I done that. She is critical of herself a lot of the time, but I've always said to her, that's your brand. And if people haven't learnt to accept that now after 20 years, they never will. James Ashby is Pauline's new minder. He previously worked for federal MP Peter Slipper, creating headlines when he accused the former Speaker of the House of sexual harassment. James, what are you doing in the world of politics again? I don't know. I met this little redhead and she was running for the state campaign 18 months ago. And uh, I just saw she didn't have the support. And I thought, well, bugger it, I'll support her. And, you know, for, for somebody who's supposedly anti-gay, we work very well together. And you, as you walked into Parliament today, how did you feel? It was an odd feeling, actually. I wasn't comfortable at all. But Ashby has agreed to be Pauline's chief of staff. A lot of these politicians can't even get to these remote areas. So this is the only way to get out and visit people. After helping her campaign as her pilot... This is like your own TV show. Are you ready? ..and with social media. We are live in two seconds. Hello, everyone. Well, the best thing that we have in our corner this time is social media. Well, I'm in Ingham today. Sorry, a little more enthusiasm. <sighs> well, I'm in Ingham today. She's now the second most followed politician in this country, behind the Prime Minister. That is a big platform. That is something that the opposition leader would kill for. It's been brought to my attention that the Australian Taxation Office are going to put in squat toilets because over 20% of their staff is from a non-English speaking background. Squat toilets? Right, you've got to squat to use them. Are you xenophobic? Please explain. When 60 Minutes asks if you were xenophobic... <laughs> yes. <laughs> that changed my life. That changed your life. <laughs> yes. Do you think you might have been? No. Not at all? No. Which is, xenophobia is different to racism. Well, of course it is. It's, it's a fear of anything foreign. I'm not fear of um, foreigners. That's, that's stupid to say, you know, fear of um, foreigners. Or cultures not so... or beliefs. God, no. I'm not fear of that. Well, this is about Muslims borrowing interest-free loans in Australia. But Pauline does have fears. Muslims. And currently, they're about Muslims. There are those working close at hand who wish to destroy all that is Australian and our freedom. When you say ban Muslim immigration, can you appreciate it sends out a, a message of hate? It does start to divide the nation. I'm trying to be protective, Liz, that let's deal with what we have here at the moment. I don't want to see another Australian lose their life or a loved one lose their life because of this. But do you think it's going to fix the problem? Liz, I haven't got a crystal ball. But that's the, that's the reason I'm saying. Do you think that is that really going then to let's stop talk. Our, our What I'd concerns? like to see is these these Muslims that are not the radicals, the, the ones that want to live their life in peace and harmony, and quite happy to be here in Australia and and love and embrace this nation. Then work with me to find the answers. You've been reading the Quran. I have read sections of the Quran. Yes, yes you carry it in your handbag. I'm told. <laughs> yes. And why do you do that? because I want to use it as a reference and to read it so I have a better understanding of what I'm talking about instead of just, you know, going out and saying things unless you have a, an understanding. Being informed is everything. Yeah. And if in the process of being informed you found yourself realising that maybe you had the wrong 
stance. Will you say so? Of course. You know, I've, uh, if people can, you know, prove to me that I haven't been right in my, my views, my opinions, um, by all means, I'm, I'm quite open-minded with a lot of things. So you could be swayed about the statements you have made so far? Of course, Liz, you know. Um, to think that we're right 100% of the time, that's been naive in, in being um, stupid about things. All right, so let's clear the air. Do you hate Muslims? No, I don't hate... I don't hate Asians, I don't hate Muslims, I don't, you know... Hate Indigenous some people, are they still getting an unfair <laughs> run? <laughs> they're getting one up on us? I'll tell you something. You know who they're coming to see? Me. Spend time with Pauline Hanson and you get to see the light and shade. As she writes her much-anticipated first speech to the Senate, there's a softness we haven't really seen before. There's a lot I want to say, but what I've got to try and do is people need hope. And if you've got hope, then you can actually say, give them that, that confidence to say at least someone's there thinking about us. That's what you'll tell them. Yeah. But mostly, she's feisty. I hope they just give me a fair go. Australians will have to wait and see which Pauline they get. Judge me on my performance and my achievements. I'm not perfect. I've never claimed to be perfect. But if anyone wants to criticise me, then at the next election, put your name forward. You have every right to stand for Parliament. And I'd like to see what sort of job you do. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.